Hello everybody, Jordan Nelson here. Today we're gonna to talk about shooting in bright conditions and specifically how to keep that shallow depth of field without having to use an ND filter. So what is the point of an ND filter? Essentially, this is just like sunglasses for your camera lens. It lets in less light so that you can keep that shallow depth of field without having to adjust your aperture or your shutter speed or your ISO. You can keep those all at the levels that you want with just having to use this. This is a great tool, but if you do not own one because the better ones are pretty expensive, this one does cause a little bit of vignetting, the one that I have, so I'm not really gonna recommend it. I'm looking to purchase another one, but but you may not have one or you may not want to deal with having this ND filter off to the side and having to screw it on or screw it off or you're afraid of what it's going to do to your shot, if it's going to vignette or change the colors at all. All of those are valid concerns. So if you don't want to deal with it, what are your options in getting a nice shallow depth of field in bright conditions? And the short and simple answer I'm giving you is to crank your shutter speed. But Jordan, you say all the time that your shutter speed should be two times your frame rate. So if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, you should be shooting at a 1 50th shutter speed. 24 times two is 48, but that's the best rounding you're gonna get with your shutter speed it would be 50. If you're shooting at 60 frames per second, you want one 1 25th of a second shutter speed. If you are shooting at 120 frames per second, you would want one 2 50th of a second shutter speed. You want to continue to do that every single time but if you are in very bright conditions and you really do care about your aperture being as low as it can be, so you can have the shallowest depth of field and have that look that you want, that's why these exist, so that you can keep your shallow depth of field without having to crank that up. So what you can do is crank your shutter speed, but this tactic is limited. Let me give you the two options where you can use this. So in video, shutter speed affects motion blur. So if you have your shutter speed way too high, then you're gonna get no motion blur, it's not gonna look natural. And if you have it far too low, you're gonna have crazy looking long exposure shots where you're gonna have a lot of motion blur. It's gonna look all weird. But there's a scenario where you have no motion blur. So tactic number one is shooting in slow motion. Because slow motion doesn't have motion blur, shutter speed doesn't really matter that much because it's not affecting the motion blur. There is no motion blur to affect. I should say that cranking your shutter speed higher doesn't really matter, but I'll show you in a little bit what it looks like if you crank it too low, because let's say you're trying to get more light in in dark conditions. I'll show you that in a second. So let's say I'm shooting at 120 frames per second. I can crank that shutter speed up really as high as I want because there's no motion blur. When I slow it back down in post, I can expose correctly. So let's take a look at these shots here. So if it's a sunny bright day outside and you're wanting to expose your shot correctly, make sure nothing's too blown out, that your subject looks natural, then you can shoot in slow motion and crank the shutter speed so that you can maintain that shallow depth of field. But if you are in dark conditions, you cannot crank the shutter speed lower than ever, 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 ever what your frame rate is. Doesn't matter if you're doing slow motion, doesn't matter if you're doing real time 24p. You should not, unless you're doing some crazy stylized look in some filmmaking thing, you should never, if you're just capturing something like a wedding, you should never make your shutter speed lower than your frame rate. Now, tactic number two, like we said, shutter speed affects motion blur. If there is no to minimal motion in your shot, then you may be able to get a pass on cranking your shutter speed because it's not going to be much of a noticeable difference. Now this one is a bit riskier and takes some judgment on the front end because maybe you don't know exactly what's going to be in your shot. Or if you do, it's like how fast is too fast? How fast can your subject move where you're gonna be able to see that it's a bit more jittery and unnatural. But if there's gonna be little to no motion in your shot, you can probably increase your shutter speed to expose correctly. And this is even if you're shooting at 24 frames per second. This isn't just in a slow motion scenario. Mm -hmm. 
So one thing to note though is that I've seen many wedding films where I've noticed that either the frame rate was higher, therefore the shutter speed was higher, or they just cranked their shutter speed in order to make sure they could expose properly. And they still played it back in real time. And I could tell there was some jitteriness to it, but what was more important to them was making sure that they got the shot and it was exposed correctly. And that maybe some of that weird motion blur stuff wasn't nearly as important to them. Some people are just totally fine with that look. If you're cool with that, not as natural, less cinematic, film-like look, then great, that's fine. You do what you need to do to make sure that you're not blowing out your subjects in the highlights or whatever. Because I think a lot of people care so much about that shallow depth of field and making sure the exposure is correct rather than the motion blur, especially if they're just a little bit cranking that shutter speed, maybe not to one five thousandth like I was doing before, but just like one one sixtieth of a second. It's probably not gonna make that much of a noticeable difference, but we were shooting in direct, really bright sunlight, so I really had to crank that thing to keep my aperture as low as I could possibly do it. But what I had was an extreme example, so I think in a lot of other situations, you could kind of maybe increase the aperture a little bit and increase the shutter speed a little bit to kind of make them work together so you're not just cranking one of them all the way. I think for me in particular, as a wedding filmmaker, I think a lot of my clients don't notice if the motion blur looks a little different than other shots in the film. I do wanna make it as perfect as possible. I don't want to have to crank the shutter speed, but I think most people who don't do video are gonna miss some of those subtle differences in the shots. This is definitely a judgment call that you have to make. What do you prioritize more? And this is all to say if you don't have an ND filter. And one thing I'd say too, if you shoot everything at 24 frames per second, you really never use slow motion, then I'd say an ND filter is probably a really good investment because it's more of a judgment call whether there's gonna be a lot of motion in your shot or not. And if you are not satisfied with that jittery kind of look, you wanna make sure everything has the perfect motion blur, an ND filter is gonna be indispensable to you. So these tips are just if you do not have one or do not want to deal with one or you don't care as much about these kind of cheats that you can use. So that's it for me, I hope that was helpful. Thanks so much for watching everybody. If you like this video, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I do have a lot more videos like this on this channel, a lot relating to wedding filmmaking as well as just video creation in general, as well as the business of it. Yeah, so consider subscribing if you have not already. Hopefully a lot of this information on this channel would be of some use to you. Thank you so much for watching everybody. We'll see you all in the next video. Whew.